welcome to everybody. Um, Brandon is, well, he'll, he'll know to introduce himself, but he's developed a very interesting approach to Aikido, which he calls Aikido 2, uh, making it a lot more real. And um, because I'm particularly interested in verbal Aikido, um, which I know Sarah, who just joined us, does. Um, and so and I see this as a very interesting link between the two. So, Brandon, over to you. Thanks um, for inviting me, Charles. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Um, and hello to everybody else. Um, my name is Brandon Williams Craig, and um, I've practiced Aikido since 1990. Um, I have a fifth don and a PhD in psychology, uh, and founded three dojos at the University of California, Berkeley, in downtown Oakland, where I am now in North Texas. So um, I'm involved in teaching online classes, um, teaching graduate students of psychology, literature and religion, professional adults, families, children, and I, and I help leaders and teams manage and deliver projects. Uh, if, if you're interested in following up with me later, um, conflictdonewell.com is the name of my website, and I do classes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Uh, let's see. Um, I open um, each session um, of the, my online dojo by proposing some agreements. Um, could everyone, number one, keep their mic muted? Um, unless they're intending to speak, and it's the time for it. Um, most sessions, including this one, are recorded. So though that the distribution of that is unclear, uh, it's not an intention to put it out there or sell it or anything like that. But if somebody needs for it not to be shared, or they have to say something private and they really want it to be as private as it can be, please make sure to tell both Charles and myself that so we can help with that and know that you have a concern rather than it just being sort of a, a general video. Um, uh, and I'll, I'd like to ask for an agreement for everybody to take care of themselves. So um, if you go off and return, just do go ahead and do that in silence, whatever way you need to. Um, and if there's some way that the, the group um, or the host can, uh, that you need our support in some way, please make sure that you tell us. And that, that's, this is a training community while we're in it and let's treat each other in that way. Um, and most important, um, everyone of every description and identity is most welcome here because, because rather than in spite of differences. Uh, we will work through conflict by way of difference as though the skills involved are the building blocks of a martial art and can be learned in the company of others through repetition. Um, so uh, anywhere I teach, everyone is welcome. And if everyone's wel not welcome, I'm, I usually don't, don't teach there. So um, let's take just a second to um, hear from anybody who feels moved to say something at this time. And if you continue after this, I'll assume that we're in agreement about what we just talked about. Is there anybody that needs to say anything or has a need that needs to be addressed or anything like that? I just allow some time to pass because the vagaries of tech, you're never sure precisely if someone's trying to get in. Okay, so. My son is uh, coming home right now. I'm going to say hello to him and ask him to go on through and take care of his business. And I'll be right back in one second. Hey, Houston, yeah. will you come in? I'm, I'm teaching the class and I want to give you a hug and then go back to teaching that. And I'll ask you to either go out in the backyard or go back to your room and I'll see you after, okay? Okay. okay. Stop bringing home. Come on through. That was Houston. Yes, sir, you may. Okay. Uh, you're going straight back outside? Okay. Introduction. Okay, do what you Aikido 2.0 is a celebration of Aikido, not a replacement or chucking out of anything. Um, I will only know if I have made my case here, if you explore what I propose after our time together, find that it makes sense and is obviously helpful, and then change the way you practice Aikido in search of long-term benefits for yourself and your students. If you don't improve what you're doing in some way, then this is not time well spent. That is not a foregone conclusion. Please don't take any claims at face value and doubt everything, especially your own reactions to what you hear. 
Investigate each idea to see if, in practice, it will hold the water of understanding. Please make objections in public and don't claim to have understood until you can demonstrate yourself that something works. Um, so let's see. Let's, let's begin moving together with something familiar, shall we? And if you are going to move, please do that. Please join me in doing that now. And if anybody can't see or can't hear or whatever, let's please work to figure out what order the tech villains are if they, if they come up. Um, imagine that um, all of our systems are connected. If you haven't heard the word somatic before, it is a proposal that uh, the Greek word soma, which refers to the body, it is a proposal that all of the things that we associate with ourselves um, to be embodied includes imagining all of those things as connected and affecting each other. So mind, brain, our physical body, a spirit, soul, the metaphors we use and the physical structures all refer to the same system. So um, please notice, just like you would on the map in an Aikido dojo, um, the connections between how you think, what you say, how you breathe, how you feel, and how you move. Um, all movement communicates something to an internal witness and to anyone who might be watching you from without. So if you are, if you'll put one foot forward and the other foot back, and we're going to move back and forth in humming, the top of your head lifts up, your eyes go to the horizon and soft focus, and you allow the movement of your body forward to, instead of rocking your hips, you'll move one vertical line of balance as far forward as you can and as far backward as you can, but your knee doesn't go past your toe. So you'll pull yourself forward rather than pushing with the back foot, and you'll pull yourself back rather than pushing with the front foot, and you'll feel the vertical column of your balance without leaning. And this is a different message to yourself and someone else than this is. It gives, a, it gives a different message of stability to have your vertical line of balance always available. And then you'll notice as you go forward, your hands want to swing forward. And as you go backwards, your hands want to swing back as they're relaxed in the socket of the shoulder. And then you'll extend your hands a little bit so that the natural movement takes on a participatory quality. You're deciding to do a little something more. And as you go backwards and forwards, the job is to feel what it's like to do what you're doing. And imagine that the way you're doing it conveys a message. This is a different thing than this is. And it's not that one is bad and the other good, it's just noticing what the ramifications are of each. And then notice what your breath is doing. And synchronize your breath with your body movement. Ah, out, in. And change feet whenever you like. And now, decouple your breath from your body. So your body is still doing the same general kind of movement, but your breath has its own cycle. And breathe as deeply as you can in order to give your body the message. There's plenty where that came from. Your body feels relaxes in a different way when your breath has its own cycle. Okay, and then bring your feet together, uh, by which I mean um, under your shoulders, not touching, but bring your feet under your shoulders, bend your knees over your toes, open up your arms and breathe in as you reach up. Let your fingertips touch you and your thumbs touch and bring your hands down and breathe out. Now the next time you go up, straighten your legs without locking your knees at the top and then bend your knees when you come down. So up. Touch and down. Ah, and bend your knees just a little bit, not over the toe, not beyond the toe, just over the toe. Ah. 
more time. And then overlap your left hand over your right hand and shake your hands with your arms and shoulders loose so that you can feel your jaw move. And make a little sound so you can hear yourself. And the job is to get full relaxation. And shake your hands. And shake your face. And roll your head around. Okay. And it feels like we're preparing for something. Like by moving our body and thinking about and feeling into how the various bits of us are connected, we're preparing for something. We call it warming up or stretching or various things. And what you'll find as we go along is that I am dedicated to treating all of conflict as though it were a martial art. We would practice it in groups. We would uh, prepare for it. We could even wear fun costumes that indicate that we're doing a different thing than our usual world. Um, because in general, conflict is handled as though um, it's to be avoided. It's a bad thing. You've already failed if you're in conflict. Um, and physical conflict is studied specifically and in, in largely in large part silently so that we can win uh, when we're in physical conflict and we prepare for it and we train for years and years. But other kinds of conflict we just try to avoid and um, generally don't study that much. So how I breathe affects my physical conflict skills and ability to deploy the techniques that I know, but it also affects how I talk and what I believe and how what I believe gets deployed in, what, in how I talk and what I do in the world when I'm not in a physical conflict. So at the martial level, we're, we're ironing out the break between are we talking or are we fighting? Because a lot of people, when they, when an attacker attacks you to rob you or something, the majority of people, especially in an urban setting, will be the victim of violence at some point in their life. And a lot of times when an attacker approaches you, they will talk to you so as to put you in the social contract, oh, we're talking, and then they'll hit you or they'll suddenly threaten you with a weapon or something so that there's a, a violent change um, and martially speaking, the job is to iron out the break so that you can be talking and also preparing your body for conflict that is more explicit so that when they change modes, you're already with them. You're already ready to move. Likewise, um, if you iron out the difference in your experience between the spoken and the physically obviously conflictual, um, you can transition um, unexpectedly, you can, you can move people back and forth between states. So when you feel, um, when you feel that something is getting too much, by your breathing and the way you choose to speak, you can de-escalate that even if it wasn't going to become a, a physical conflict. You can also bring the energy up uh, and bring conflict that's having a hard time getting spoken into the room in much the same way that you would turn and let somebody know that they are at your, their boundary. If they come any closer, it's Aikido time. And so what I'm hoping for Aikido 2.0 is that we will place our language inside our techniques so that we train traditional Aikido silently, trying to figure it out, you know, in the same way that we would physically in the normal, in the usual sense. And then we would insert basic scripts and we would learn those basic scripts inside the technique on the mat so that we have a bridge to transfer into other spoken experience. Because if we don't practice speaking and being physical and speaking and being physical, we don't iron out that gap that's used to distract us when it's time to attack us. And we also have trouble realizing that um, a speech, a public policy, um, a particular way of crafting a narrative is a prelude to an attack. Um, and then we, it's, hard to, it's hard to respond and we feel hopeless because, well, it's just out of my control. Well, they're just talking and I can't do anything about that. When in fact, the only way to heal society's dilemmas is to talk about it, engage directly in conflict, and get right in there um, to figure out what needs to be done. 
And sometimes it's just time to move, even though you don't know where you're headed. So let me stop for a moment and see if there are any questions. And then I'm, I'd like to, to illustrate the Aikido 2.0 um, putting script into um, a structured and familiar technique. Does anybody have a question they need to ask or something they need to say? Okay. So imagine Taino Hanko, or some people call it Katate Dori uh, Tenkan. Um, watch for a moment, and then I'm going to ask us all to do it together. Um, I'm going to offer my hand, and you're going to reach toward the camera as though you were grabbing it. Um, and we're going to do that in the traditional, nothing said way. And since we are separated by a camera, the element we're focusing on is timing and, and going in a way that, that would appear to an observer to be coordinated. So wait till I put my hand out, I'll put it out, you'll grab, I'll turn. And each person could, what, what I do in my regular online classes is each person gets a turn to trigger the group. That way everybody trains together all the time. So we don't usually break into the smaller groups because it's technically it gets weird when people go away and come back and it's hard to manage. So I have my left foot forward, which will be this side for you, probably your right. I'm going to offer, you grab, I'll make a basket with my arms, turn my foot the same way, and rotate. Now I'll go to the other side. Okay. So we would do the basic Taino Hanko, and the student learns the things that you're familiar with if you're a student of Aikido, which is to say, you learn what it's like to be grabbed, you learn what it's like to reach through into someone else's center and feel yourself able to move it, because instead of using your muscle, you use your structure, and you feel their structure, and you shift your balance so that you stay in balance, and by virtue of their connection, they lose theirs. So we would first, the first level is we would practice that. The second level is we would add a script. Um, and when, I, when the person puts their hand out, makes the invitation, the other person says, you're wrong, and grabs them. Boom. And the person who's turning says, I'm listening, as they rotate their ear close to the mouth of the person they're throwing. So we're asking um, for a particular sense as we do it. And you're acting, you're, you're um, trying to be psychologically convincing to yourself and to the other person. So rather than I'm listening, you would say something that would be received as listening by an observer. So I'm offering, you're saying, uh, actually, uh, Charles, would you um, be my partner and unmute so people can hear your voice? It's a pleasure, yep. Hey, so. I'll offer my hands, and when the hand goes out, you grab me remotely and say, you're wrong. And I'll do, I'll do um, Tenkan and say, I'm listening. I'm wrong. I'm listening. And on the other side. You're wrong. I'm listening. OK, now it's your turn. As soon as your hand comes up, I'll reach for it, and I'll say, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm listening. You're wrong. I'm listening. And so you end up patterning not only the physical movement and the understanding of connecting to the other person, we're literally and metaphorically connecting at the same time. So rather than telling somebody, oh, hey, you know, if you do Aikido, you'll connect with people differently, and then expecting them to sort of figure that out, we're practicing it specifically. And the Thai Sabaki, the, uh, the body management, uh, the movements underneath the various techniques. Um, I'm not sure um, how Charles, how you do that in your dojo and how many of these folks are your direct students and that sort of thing. But um, Aikido is a jujitsu. It's a subcategory of a jujitsu called Daito Ryu. And um, there are specific body movements underneath um, in, inside all the techniques of which there are. So there's a, um, a set of building blocks, if you will. And um, 
what I do is when we do, we'll do some of those right now. Um, I have an exercise I'd like to propose and they have words associated with them when I do them. So I'm going to skip the part where we do them and I say the Japanese name for it. So it's possible to memorize it in that way. That also does really interesting things to your brain in the learning process um, to have to, you know, figure out a, a language that most, most of you will not have spoken before. And then, um, but I put a script with it so that the movement, um, for instance, uh, the Japanese for entering is irimi. And I have people who speak English as their first language say, I'm in. As though someone were making a proposal, hey, how about if we go for a sausage? And your response is, oh, I'm in. It's, uh, we're, I'm looking for basic um, language that take it off the table, I don't know, what do I say? Because that's difficult. And give someone something to say that will both improve their physical technique and will connect with what they're communicating with other people when they do the technique a particular way. So here are a few examples. Please feel free to do them with me. Um, I have my right foot forward, which will probably be on your left side, but it doesn't matter. Please feel free to change sides. But part of this is going to be the changing of sides. So actually, so why don't we line up so that it looks to you like you're doing the same thing I'm doing. So like it's a mirror. And our hands and feet will match. And I'm going to move toward the camera with my feet in exactly the same position and say, I'm in. And please feel free to say it with me. And then when I, and then when I go back out, my feet are the same. And I, I shoot out and I say, I'm out. I'm in. I'm out. I'm going to step with my back foot to the side and say, excuse me, as I get out of the way and let someone go past me. Sidestep, excuse me, excuse me, I'm in, I'm out, awesome, I'm going to turn right where I am, I'm just going to take, take my feet and point them in the opposite direction, one, two, and I'm going to say, who's there, like I'm looking behind me, who's there, excuse me, who's there, who's there, Okay, now facing the camera, I'm going to combine I'm in with who's there. And if someone were standing in front of me, that would put me right behind them. So I'm going to say, I'm behind you. I'm behind you. Excuse me. I'm not available right now. I'm behind you. I'm behind you. Excuse me. Okay. And they, it, goes, it goes on like this. Um, I'll just show you a few. When I close the front and sweep the back, known as tenkan in Japanese, I say, I'm listening. Close the front, sweep the back. I'm listening. Excuse me. I'm listening. I'm listening. Um, when I open my front foot and take two steps, so I go one, two, and I end up facing in the opposite direction, open the front, one, Two, for a two-step, I say, as though there was someone in front of me doing the same thing, what do you see? Because now I have their perspective, since I've turned to look the direction they were looking. What do you see? Yeah. When I do this without opening, without telegraphing my movement, I just want to turn on a dime right where I am. I just close the, both hips at the same time, and then I open both hips at the same time. And that turns me 180 degrees right where I am. It's a closed two-step. And I say, where? Because it's a rather rapid turn. Where? So someone could say, behind you. And I'd say, where? And then if I see the person there and I have leisure, what do you see? I open it up again. So one of the things we could do, um, I like to mix those things up and just start saying things. And people will do with their body what the, say, what the thing I say means about the movement. And, Part of its job is to mess with your brain so that you go, I can't do this. Just like when you first walk into the dojo, because that creates a different um, creative moment, a different discovery of um, the difficulty involved as you ignore that and just kind of try to keep catching up and keep getting it, uh, which is what I find, especially as a mediator, um, helping people to do that and doing it myself is a significant part of resolving conflict. Um, and practicing it 
rather than being told you should really do that is the only way that I know to actually be able to do it. And if you can do it with your body as well, you can do it in circumstances in which it's not clear whether it's going to be a physical situation or an emotional verbal situation. Um, and it's really important to be able to function not knowing the answer to that question. Otherwise, it's too late a lot of the time when someone does in fact attack you. So again, all the things I'm proposing, I allege will improve your physical Aikido and connect the things that Aikido has been promising to deliver for years and telling you, you know, this stuff out there and actually puts it on the mat so that you get a chance to practice it with people who care, know what the game is, will stop when you say stop, and you can that way you can train the same way you would um, to have sane, balanced conflict experiences that someone else goes, hey, actually, that was way better than it could have been. Um, so again, was, would anyone like to ask a question or propose something or um, I'm happy to go on? Let's see, it looks like we're at about half our time right now and I'm definitely gonna leave time for questions at the end, but also if someone wants to say something or ask something, that would be a great time. Um, Brandon, thank you for that. I, um, a little bit confused about the difference between I'm behind you and who's there, the movements that, the difference between those two steps. Who's there is changing the direction of your feet, you stay in the same place in space. It's just pivoting or Senkai, okay. it's pivoting right where you are. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That's who's there. And then I'm behind you is? Is, Irim, is an Irimi entry. It's you're passing the person and turning so that you end up behind them as though you're going to pat them on the back. So it's step, step, turn sort of thing. It's That'd be sli right. sliding in or, or sugiyash and a pivot as you get behind them. So your body travels in space and you pivot, travels in space and pivot for I'm behind you, whereas who's there is just turning where you are. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. It, and, and again, all this has martial application as well as psychological. Um, it's really important when you find that someone's behind you to rotate in a way that doesn't throw you off balance and makes it more likely that you'll be able to respond in a balanced way. And I mean balance, literally and metaphorically. It almost always transfers. Otherwise, it wouldn't be somatic. And thanks for the question. Anybody else? Brandon, I was wondering if um, part of what you're aiming at here is kind of like trigger words. So that you, you think or say or verbalize something and then your body does it without having to think, ah, oh, now I've got to do something. Is yes. Correct. Yes. And, and that works from both directions. When, when this is directly applied to, to work with somebody who has uh, what the general category is PTSD, but there's lots of subcategories, I find, of that, much like the word depression is widely used and it means all kinds of things to people, but there's lots of subcategories. When someone has a trauma triggery that is easy, to, that is, is triggerable, one of the ways to work with that is to attach handles to it, so to speak. The I can feel it coming oh, that's what just happened, things like that. And there are ways that you, if you can name it and you can have, um, it has a presence in your psychological narrative that is familiar to you and you know what it feels like, you can work with it as opposed to simply being whacked by it. So that's one meaning of the word trigger. The other side is I think more of what you meant, which is um, a thing that I say that my body knows I'm already in motion. I'm already doing a thing if I've said the word. It's sort of your own internal safe word. And this works great for that too. The kids that I taught this the, from three to um, nine, um, uh, they began to use these on the playground frequently um, just because it was fun to have the shared context. It was funny and silly to them to say these words when they didn't. And then they started to become part of the common vocabulary and they moved from being silly and scripted to being triggers for each other. And the trigger effect was, oh, we're now in peace practices which is what this is called when it's made into a curriculum for um, a group. Um, maybe I should explain that. Anyway, so yes, in, in, in most of the ways trigger is meant, um, this, is, this can be very helpful um, for triggering yourself, preventing yourself from being triggered, and for setting up predictable outcomes for a particular series of movements, thoughts, words, that kind of thing. Kind of a long answer to a short question, sorry. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. 
Hi, um, I'm very new to all this, so forgive me if this is a, an obvious question, but are you saying then that um, in a, in a non-Aikido situation you could use these, um, these techniques um, of, in a conflict situation, just a regular conflict situation off the mat? Absolutely, because Aikido has been promising to affect our off the mat behavior for decades, and it's been my experience in and out of the Aikido community that that's not a standard to which we actually hold ourselves. Right. And, and we're, if for, for people who are not super familiar with Aikido, um, visualization and paying attention to the language is the door. I say things that are explicitly physical metaphors. Oh, I dropped the ball on that. I feel like they're pushing and pulling me all over the place. Um, we, we talk about our conflicts as though they were already physical because we are somatic beings and all of that's the same process. We just talk about it. Through. So if you feel pushed and pulled around by somebody, I key, I key strategies make sense in response to them. If for no other reason that practicing a martial art gives you lots of options rather than having to choose between either this or that. And the same thing happens psychologically when you train. And the be benefit of doing Aikido 2.0 is that it gives you both. You have physical responses to literal physical conflict, and you have physically rooted stuff that helps you keep your center when you're just doing um, conversational, mm. working your way through a conversa conversational difference. Okay, thank you. Thanks for asking. Anybody else? Okay, so the basic structure of what I do, um, the, it came, checking my time. I've, uh, let's see, my first career was in the professional theater. Um, and I, I did that for quite a while. And then um, I found Aikido in, in the middle of that. And um, uh, I, was, I went on a national theater tour and, and, and visited Aikido dojos and things like that. And then I became an apprentice because I realized I wanted Aikido to be core to my identity in general. So my first career, like most people, was student. And my second career was theater. Um, and then I um, started taking a direct and professional interest in psychology and facilitation and mediation and that sort of thing. Um, and so Aikido 2.0 came about because my students were having difficulty figuring out how to get past the bits of their technique they couldn't understood, understand why it didn't work. And a lot of the time what was needed was um, an, a, an internal commitment to what was being communicated with the other person. Um, so if, if I, there's a technique called um, um, munetsuki, which means I punch you in the middle, basically, and then kotegaishi, where you turn the hand over until it stops, and then you can feel the rest of the body lock, and you're able to move their body around based on the joint lock that goes all the way through, um, wrist to elbow to shoulder to spine to core. Um, and if you respond to someone trying to punch you, by grabbing their hand and yanking on them, they, you stop them. You create resistance that allows them to stop. Rather than gently receiving it and continuing their emotion. And so I found that my students, some of them, were muscling their partner. And they, the minute they locked their muscle in and tried to yank the person's hand, the person yanked back and had their center back. And so the message I was asking them to give is, I'm gonna tell you, <coughs> um, me first, and I'm going to punch you in the middle. And your job is to get out of the way, put your hand on top of mine, and say, let's go together. Because what you're wanting is the bodies to do this. Um, and they would grab and they'd go yank, yank. And I would say, oh, but this doesn't look like let's go together. This looks like, I don't know, come on, come on. Or you're too slow. Or things like that. And I want to believe that what you mean is let us go together. So that when the person comes, you get out of the way link up with them and you go together and if that's not the result that you're getting and i don't believe it why should they why should you does that make sense yeah so i started putting the narratives into the aikido techniques in order to help my aikido students go oh 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 about the and so i ended up with basic narratives associated with all of our basic category of techniques and then i started so i would say well it's not working because you're not going together so you need to figure out and we and we go so then that's aikido 2.0 and it turns out that we're doing that 
anyway, here we are, we're not able to touch each other. And we're, and I'm watching these online sessions with other Aikido teachers who have never had to do this kind of thing before. And they're really struggling because they practice Aikido like you punch and I grab you, which is great, but it's basic. It's, it's the beginning part of it. And their big question for me is almost always, well, how do you do more of it? And I'm, I say, will you include the things that you want to be able to do? You put language into the technique if what you want is to be able to use the technique principles in a language environment. So that's Aikido 2.0. Then I take that, that, that structure and that curriculum and I teach it through theatrical improvisation because that's how you make that particular rubber meet the road. Is, but I need to be able to do this in real life. And I'm like, absolutely, so let's do that. You won't know what I'm going to say. I won't know how you're going to respond. No, sir, I am not available right now. Please use, please use your best judgment and make your own decisions. I am not available right now. Please use your own judgment. Please use your own judgment. Go ahead, please. Thanks. And there it was right leave me alone is one of your options but i don't want the result of that i don't want him to have that habit or me to have that habit and every time i do that or am tempted to do it i think to myself yeah but that's not what i want what do i want and then i think about i think about the exercise because we repeat stuff over and over and it makes us who we are i want please use your own judgment I would like someone to say that to me in the same way. Well, please, you're fine. Use your own judgment and we'll talk about it later. I trust you. Go ahead. Because that's what I want him to think is that's the way I want him to think the world works. And it does. We just did it. Okay. Aikido 2.0, language and techniques. Martial nonviolence. Martial nonviolence is taking the movement of Aikido and, the lang and a redirective language and practicing it to the point that you can improvise with it becomes improvisational because that is the way you prepare to influence groups because in the end I, I really want my family to work this way and my job and that sort of thing but I'm extremely insignificant which is fine which is fine um, but what I would really like for Aikido to do is affect the world that's what the founder that that's the absolutely explicit instruction we were given by the founder he said, you know, throwing people down, fine, but go and make of the world one family. And I would like it to be a less dysfunctional family. And less dysfunctional, my definition of that is conflict done well, as opposed to conflict done poorly. So Aikido 2.0, you add improvisational theater skills and facilitation, practice working with groups in a way that will help and leadership is shared and power works well. And then when I do a curriculum for a particular group, especially nonprofits and schools and things like that, I call it peace practices. And that was the, in, that we got international funding for that, we did that in the San Francisco Bay Area for several years. Um, and then the whole shebang, I refer to as conflict done well, because that is what I would like expectations reset in light of. I would like for it to be impossible to be a leader anywhere without having demonstrable, measurable, repeatable conflict skills. I mean, it, I, 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 and it's one of those things that I, it's, a, it's a forehead slapper for me why we haven't, we don't already have it. So great. But you know, I, I, if I couldn't read a budget sheet, I would never have been hired to be, you know, CEO of anything, much, you know, much less a nonprofit with funding. I mean, how, if they got to read a budget sheet, surely they should have some kind of conflict training. And if you do conflict in a way that makes things suck for people, why hire that person, for goodness sake? It's measurable. People can say, you know, you can say what it was like, how it was. And if they say they don't know beans about conflict, you can't hire them to manage. Management is, is, is conflict resolution. So anyway, I, I won't. <clears throat> it's a speech. I'll stop. So... Right, right. So Aikido 2.0, add improv and facilitation, martial nonviolence, make a curriculum for this group or that group, peace practices, and conflict done well is the whole thing. And that's the language I use to enter um, corporate spaces and enterprise and governments and stuff like that. Questions? Yeah, I've got 
one, I mean, what would be really useful for me would be to see you um, take a technique all the way through in the way you're talking. So we see it from beginning to end, see how it all kind of, all the jigsaw pieces yeah, yeah. together. So, so the basic um, ski, um, kotegaishi, right? One person punches toward, right toward the camera, right in the middle. The other person moves their foot to the side, gets out of the way, and brings their hand out on top of the other person. So I was on the middle of the line. I go to the side. I turn my hand and my foot in, just like I did with Taino Hanko, only the foot's the hands over the top. I shift my balance, whoop, so that it pops the person off their balance, and I complete, complete my circuit. So it's the same movement as before, but we're dealing with a punch, and we're wrapping over the top rather than being grabbed and making a circle here. Okay? So it's a balance exercise. How you breathe and how you feel about it and keeping your own balance while you affect the other person is the, is the aim. Um, and I'll, I'll be the puncher. And when I punch, I'm going to say, me first. Okay, that's one of the classic dilemmas in all conflict. Right? It, it can be framed a thousand different ways, but what people are often saying is that was not the sequence we agreed on, or I get to go next because it's my turn or whatever. So I say, me first, and you get out of the way, touch my hand and take me with you and say, let's go together. And as you do that, I'm brought around with you, not jerked. Smooth is the new fast and hard, smooth. So now I go to the other side. I'm punching over here. Me first. Let's go together. And let's do it twice more. Other side. Me first. Other side. Me first. Yep. And and one on one, right? I would say I notice that when you're rotating, your body is coming forward and your head is dropping. And it looks like you're falling forward so that you're not keeping your vertical. Notice when I do it, and then I would do it, notice what, when I do it, that it looks like I'm hanging my head or I'm falling forward. And the job is to give the message that I'm all good. I have my balance. These are choices that I'm making that are specific. And I have your balance because you gave it to me. And now I'm going to choose not to tear your arms off. It feels like, it feels like all, all kinds of horrible things could happen. I'm not going to choose any of those. That's the difference between Aikido and Jiu Jitsu is that classic Japanese Jiu Jitsu does as much damage as possible with as little energy as possible. And we, Aikidoists, do as little damage as possible with the same skill set. So you can feel that kind of, oh, I lost my balance. I gave it to her, him. And instead of taking advantage of me, they said, right on. And they set me back up again and said, how about this? So counter proposal rather than teaching them a lesson they'll never forget and other memorable, quotable, ridiculous, hostile, aggressive. And it's not that, it's not that one would never cause harm to, to anybody else. It's that the instances in which it makes sense to do that are so few and far between. And especially men are locked and loaded to do damage really fast, like as a first option, emotional, physical, and it just doesn't make, martially, it doesn't make any sense. If we walked around like that on the street, we would end up in jail. And that emotionally, we do all kinds of weird damage to each other that's absolutely, it doesn't, not only is it a bad idea, it's just, it doesn't make any sense that we would have those habits given the world we live in. We don't need them anymore. I agree. Um, so if you move on, and that was really interesting, if you move on now, suppose you went moved into a Kodagesh or something, do you have a word that goes with that, some kind of proposal? Uh, sometimes um, when, I, when I go to the throw, I'll say, let's sit, and I'll go all the way to the ground with them, especially when it's kids. Um, um, and there's a difference between please sit, in which I'm up and you're down, and let's sit, which let us propose us that we both go down. And the children are learning to opt into proposals as their first, as their first line of response. And they're, and they're learning to opt to suggest things that are physically um, legitimate, that they make sense together. And it's something that they'd be willing to do. And they're communicating it to the other person with their words and with their body. So it's the difference, they're also learning the difference between what a boundary really feels like. It's a difference to say, oh, no, 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 and to say, no. 
And it's a different, it's a different thing. My body, when I say no, my body says no. When I say, oh, please don't be mad at me. But what comes out is no, it doesn't, it's not the same thing. So there's just there's authenticity to communication and integrity that's internal and expressed. Brandon. Yes. Hi, Jagya. Um, Hi. Just trying to understand uh, utilization of 2.0. Um, of course, when you do Minitsky and uh, we do Urumi one turn and do the uh, Kotogeshi, are okay. you, are you, I'm just trying to understand uh, what you're trying to do and is there a certain age group that you're trying to, so let's, so the last bit you said in that whole technique was the fall when, when you, uh, when the uh, Uki falls down and you use a different uh, word for it. Is it uh, you're replacing the word, the, the, the original words that we would be using? To make no. it simpler? I, I'm, I'm trying to relate what, uh, th there's a difficulty here because we've been trained for so long in a certain way that I'm trying to relate 2.0, how to help us. Yes. So your body communicates with your partner. If I, if I step into the Kota Gaesh, right, and I do this, I'm basically saying, sit down. I'm telling, I'm with my body, I'm telling you to sit down, sit down, right? And you go, and your bottom goes down, your knees go out from under you and you fall down on your butt. So, so the question, so what I'm saying is, yes. I, if, if, if that's what you're saying, that I say, sit down, it's a, it's a, a the technique is, is stronger, is that what you mean? Or what I, I'm trying to psychologically understand what you're trying to teach. It, it depends on what, if I'm on the Aikido mat, it depends on what the person needs. A lot of the time, someone will be, will be doing this and the person's not going anywhere. So, and I, my, and my, my question for them is, um, I, I, one of, this is a toolbox that I can use to communicate what they need to try that will balance out their technique. So are I, these, uh, sorry, I, I apologize. Are these, no. uh, are these uh, words that you have developed, yeah, the triggers of where you want them to go? Oh, what needs to happen? Yeah, what's happening now, what's happening now looks like this. And how about if you try it with a bit more of this is one of the ways this can be applied. When we, learn, when we learn it on the mat, we do it silently in the traditional way. And I say, you know, just be, be, here's what I'd like to see. Try it this way, please. And I show it and they do their best to do that. And then I might say, now please add, add a basic script. And so we say it the same way all the, every time. It's not that that's what's going to happen on the street, but we need a place to start. So now when you do the Kota Gaesh, and you pop their knees out and they sit down, please say, let's sit. And I want you both to go down. Okay, now you, and now say, please sit. And now you, only they go down and you don't. No, you're still going down, please stay up. And so the language gives us more handles on how your outer technique and your inner intention are linked. And then in the third phase, we do um, what I call kimusubi, which means tying it up, tying the spirit together, basically, bring, like, into, like you tie your knot of your belt. And we bring it all together into the martial moment. It's they really attack you. You really respond. There may be talking. There may not be talking. You don't know what's going to happen. And that's the, in, in a dojo, you know, where you're not going to literally clobber each other. That's as high as you'll go. And then when you're a black belt, you figure out other ways to, to work into uh, more direct forms of, assault so that you can actually deal with being jumped on at least in our dojo you do so does that make sense where this all fits in it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, understand it you it's not possible to do this in one session of course uh, so first there. you know <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got a class following this by an hour too you want to <laughs> more than welcome it yeah or no four o'clock here so that would be uh, anyway two, uh, two, two hours after we're done i've got another you feel free to join us Thank you so much. Adrian has his hand up. Um, Please. Yeah, so uh, I want to probably, it's easier to understand if you put it in the context of, uh, let's say, police. Yes. Police, police force has to be in the street and when they have to deal with a crime or whatever, uh, 
antisocial behavior, they will try to do the escalation, they will talk. And then when it doesn't work or works for some point of degree, I don't know, um, they will do physical intervention. Yes. So they will get physical. And then if they have to rest, they will go for restraining. Uh, uh, this will be the three levels. So what I like about this, uh, Sensei, what you're doing, it is putting the words. So basically, whatever you do, you also talk about this. So even police, if they go in a second stage and they go for physical intervention or even restraint, they talk. They not just arrest you. They tell you what they're doing. You have to calm down. If you don't calm down, uh, you're not pinned down. I will let you go now. Uh, if you calm down, whatever. They tell you. They give you instructions. They give you... Yep. The words. Yep. And a lot of the time, a lot this of the, the time, they occupy your mind while their body mm. is doing something very different. Mm. They're telling you to calm down and go slowly, and they're escalating and going faster. So they get, yes. so you. I'm not, I don't want to talk about that. It's just that the stage is how it works. What I want actually to ask you is can you show actually how uh, improvisation is, how that works? Because you said this is a uh, script, but then you get to, the, to improvise. So can you yeah. show, like, that she would be something, but then how do you improvise? Kind of, yes. So, I mean, I can kind of show it because, um, okay, so say, say something to me that is, and we'll, we'll build it so I can show what the, where the context of the improv improvisation comes in. Say something aggressive to me. You're so bloody ugly. You're so bloody ugly. Okay, we did that, right? Yeah. So, I, when people don't know what to say to start out learning how to do the improvisation, I say respond with the stereotype. Say, do the obvious thing that would happen in a bad TV sitcom. You're ugly. No, you're ugly. Great. So we've done that. So now, now instead, imagine that what they're doing is a punch and redirect them instead. So say it again. You seem very upset to me. Right, and we've taken your so bloody ugly. I get out of the way, and I say, "You seem very upset to me." Okay, and now you talk empathy. Yeah. Now you talk empathy. Empathy. <laughs> Sorry, it's empathy. Now you talk empathy. Yeah. Well, you're receiving them, which empathy is empathy is a receiving. You're receiving them, and mm -hmm. you're proposing a different way of thinking about it. You're not being hit. I am ugly, which is one of the possible, you know, stereotypical mm -hmm. responses. I am. I am. I'm ugly is one of the stereotypical words. Instead, I'm saying, you seem very upset to me. I could also say, if I were going behind you into your past, I could say, what is it that makes you pissed off at me? What happened? What happened? Or I could say, tell me more. And we could go this way. If I'm, I'm jumping behind you, right? You say, you're ugly, and you try to hit me in the head. I jump behind you, and I say, tell me more. And we go more the direction you wanted to head before I'm coming over the top and it's a mm. So the improv is what, describe what you're doing. What is it? You came toward me, you came for me, you attacked me. Okay, you grabbed me, you pulled me. You tried to hit me in the face. There's something about, you know, you're going, this is my psych, the, the center psychologically of my personality. There's something about me that you really want to hit. And you may feel free to swing that hand. I'm just not going to be there when, it, when, when the hand gets here. But I'm still with you. I'm accompanying you, and we have to figure out what to do with that. And there are so many choices. I can take you down. I can bring you further the direction you were headed, metaphorically and literally. I can take you back into the past again from where you came. We can go to the sides. What about that? What about that? There's all those options. And the challenge is to pair them enough that you have lots of options, whether you're, behaving, whether you're doing physical response or you're doing an emotional response with language. How's that? Is that an acceptable answer to your question? Yes, thank you very much. Why 2.0 then? 2.0. Why is because, that? Because Aikido has promised this and never done it. And we need to practice this. It needs to be obviously, okay, this is a new thing. We're going to do this part of it that we've always implied, but we've never practiced because we're martial artists and we know that you have to practice it to be able to do it under pressure. And we haven't. Sorry, this is a 2.0. It's Aikido. Still Aikido. But it's, now we're going to do the rest. We're not going to leave the extension of IP principles to sort of guesswork and metaphor and kind of new age. It's not really a thing. So no, we're going to do it. We're going to, you know, talk to me, yell at me, 
let's escalate and de-escalate and come at me and do it slowly and do it fast. And I want, I want all my options open. And Thank I want you. to practice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Okay, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're very close to the end. Um, let's see. Can I ask one very simple question? Please. It may sound like an idiot question. I mean, when you are teaching on the basic level and you're doing Kodagesh and you're saying, sit down, let's say, or let's sit, do you, every class, will that Kodagesh be associated with that same phrase or is it fairly flexible? The, the basic phrase is absolutely always the same. In the same way that Taino Hanko, it even has this, in most dojos, it has the same pace. It comes the same amount of time after the bow in. It, there's the ritual repatterning that's required so that this basic expectation finally reaches out into regular life in a way that it's just supposed to sneak up on you now. And it kind of does, but, uh, but the ritual repetition of specific things that rewrite how you think about them is what will make um, the training happen extensively through your life so that you have enough repetitions to be able to do it under pressure. Otherwise, you just, you won't. I mean, it's nice to think about, but it doesn't, doesn't happen. And for me, it doesn't. I need to do something over and over and over again to be, to have any facility doing it quickly or when I feel bad or, I mean, it's like playing the violin or anything else. It's that it, no scales, no arpeggios, no violin. Sorry. You're, an, you're, you're a violin owner, not a, not a musician. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I've been looking for this sort of thing. And the only other place I've found it, well, the other two places are NLP and Verbal Aikido. Uh, yeah, but, but Verbal Aikido doesn't do, the, doesn't do the overlap, doesn't do the whole <laughs> system. And NLP, um, I get people from NLP uh, and from um, nonviolent communication and things like that coming and saying, but what do I do about my body? Yeah. And I, it's like, well, that's, there's, the, there's a, an entire field called somatic psychology that that responds to the need to reintegrate the idea of how we work so that we are fully embodied as we make our choices about what we're going to do and not do and that's the requirement and that's why nlp is limited and that's why um in in nbc is um super helpful but only part of the story um, and we just need to go back and forth between the various things that we have been encouraged to imagine as separate in the Cartesian mind-body split. Because it's not. It's, it's interesting to look at it as though mind were a thing, but it's not. It's a metaphor for organizing our ideas about how consciousness works. And we'll always be scraping at that and never nailing it down because it's consciousness. I mean, it's, you know, how does a fish know what water is? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, could hardly be more important I mean, you know until unless we solve this we're not going to survive as a as a species yeah it, it is our survival challenge we, we do conflict poorly and it's something that is very easy to train we just have to raise the expectation that everybody will do it like literacy it's conflict literacy is what we're talking about and it, it's not something that is needs to be taught to troubled children in one public school or in the United States or private schools in the UK. It's just, it's, it's needs to be a ubiquitous. Everybody needs to be doing it. Yep. Did you want to um, have anything to finish or do you want some to see if there's any final questions? Well, I got so, I got so excited in my start that I forgot to bow in. So I, we could bow out, I guess. Uh, I just, uh, yeah. Additional questions would be welcome. Um, I, I, there are so many illustrations, like we get to the point of not knowing where to start because each technique has its own um, necessity. Um, uh, Brandon, but I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, when we practiced this before, I found it a little bit distracting um, saying something. Um, yes. So is it, are you saying that it's, it's the practice? That's why you practice in the dojo so that it's not so, because we, we normally practice without saying anything. So when we tried it when saying something, it kind of, I forgot, you know, what to do with my, my hands and things. Um, Absolutely. That's the, that's the gap we're trying to iron out. Okay. Is that a lot of the time someone will subtly suggest that they are a physical threat to you, even if they're not really going to do anything, in order to make your brain shut down. And the job is to keep all of the, even though it's unpleasant, to keep all of the, this could go anywhere open because then you're able to make your own decisions and so many options are open 
It's uncomfortable that so many things could happen to you, but it's extremely important that you have so many ways you could respond and that you keep in that creative moment by practice. It's the same thing as if, if four people jumped on you and you've just started Aikido, you're going to get, you're going to get clobbered. But if four people jump on you and you've been doing Aikido for 20 years, you should be able to go boop, 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 boop and find spots for them all. And it's just practice in between that time. And the same thing is possible with verbal psychological conflict um, and then ironing out the difference between so that you can easily go back and forth between the physical and, and the verbal and not have there be a break that allows the other person to do things that you don't want them to do. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Cool. Anybody else? Um, can I just ask again? I love this stuff and it, it feels as though this is completely the way that I can understand it and it really makes absolute perfect sense to me and it, it was like oh well if they said that you know right at the beginning I'd have been a bit better than I am now <laughs> um, but um, is the in your techniques when you say where and who's there what's the difference between those two is it do you move your feet on one and pivot on the other or step on one and so where and who's there who's there is uh right you stay right where you are nothing yep. or, but your orientation you go from north to south boom, okay. boom. You, just, you just go boop, and, and you're change. in i hand me and you just change so it's yes. okay thank you and, and, which one is that where that's, that's who's there. There. okay thank you and where is a is a two step a closed two step, so um, uh, your key society right the, the, there's a, usually yeah. an there's usually an opening foot the the front hip in um, in homu and key society always opens, and then the knee goes over that toe and that's that's what starts you on your on your path okay. right for a, for a closed two step. You simply, without the opening, because there, are, a lot of times you don't want to telegraph that you're about to do something. Yeah. And someone punching you and you're doing ikkyo and you just put your hands up and you close your hips. And suddenly you're on your way. It's just right where you are, you just close. And then if you open both your hips, whoop, you're facing the other direction. Complete close, complete open. And what you're doing is a ballet exercise. Ah. So it's the, one of the exercises we do in my classes, we shift all the way to one side and we open the weightless hip, and then we open the weight hitting hip, and your knees stay over the toes. So you shift, open, open, and if you can differentiate your hips, when you're doing your technique, there's this, this hip opening, or there's also this hip opening, which makes the entire body, because my weight's in it. So where is on a dime, two, two step, close, knees touch, open, adjust, bump, bump. So you're, you're turning, making a complete turn, Whereas who's there is just look, starting looking this way and ending up looking that way, just moving your feet. Oh. I have to practice it. Thank you very much. So, and if, if, you, if you're a YouTube fan, there's various, I have various resources there. Just look for peace practices, martial nonviolence, my first and last name in quotes, and you'll find a bunch of stuff that's okay. out there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And you're welcome to come to one of my classes anytime. Hi. What do you think, Charles? I think it's great. I wish we could do loads more. Um, I shall definitely be plugging. Three times a week. <laughs> Sorry? I do it three times a week. Come anytime. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I, as you probably gathered from Renal, we've been trying it out already. Uh, yeah. We'll it sort of fumbling our way through. Uh, but that's a great way to discover. Yeah. Absolutely. No, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing a lot of more fumbling. Lovely. And I'd love to come back again at some time. So right. let's do it again. You will definitely be invited. And Shall we bow out? Normally at this point, we'd bow out and I'd take you out for a drink and a meal. But I'm full of <laughs> Next time. Well, put that on my, put that on my account and I'll, I'll take you up on it um, uh, when next it's possible to be in the UK. Great. It's, it's, it's on the account. Thank you very let's much.
。ありがとうございました。どうも。See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was absolutely brilliant. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Very interesting. Really、sure、a link. Thanks for organizing, Charles. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a link for this evening's class?、Uh, for the recording? Yeah, if for, you... for the one in two hours time. <laughs> um, oh, um,、uh, yes. Go to conflictdonewell.com.、Yep. And there will be a link that says if you want to sign up for classes, sign up for classes here. And do that right now, and I'll, I'll approve you and send you a please come link. Thank you very much. It's been brilliant. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank, thank you, Charles. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, thank you. for being here. See you next week.